Hello guys, welcome back to Tox Riders. Uh, let's make uh, our hands wet and go directly to Preview in this video. Uh, we want to start to talk about the post-processing of the projects I've mentioned in a previous video. But before that, I want you... Um, to be more familiar with the concepts, so let me let me show you quickly the the, the UI of the part view and having a quick tour of the user interface. So uh, I assume that you know how to install Parview. That's pretty simple. Sometimes it doesn't need even installation. You download the binary and you run it. Uh, here I have a customized Parview, but uh, the thing is, in the next series, after, the post, after this post-processing series, I will talk about installation of scientific computing programs and libraries in details. So for now, I just need you to have Purview installed in your system and nothing more. So I assume that you have installed, you have it installed in your system. So I run Purview in my system, uh, which is an Ubuntu machine. It says that I have a GPU available uh, with four gigabytes of RAM. That is indeed very important for us in one of the videos I, sh I told you. But uh, yeah, this is the UI part view. It's pretty simple. You can work with that with common sense. But the thing is, the important part, the most important part is this in pipeline browser in which we have a set of pipelines that are connected to each other and you create your final output based on the hierarchy of these pipelines and or objects like say indeed they have you have sources you have a simple thing you can create something here from a source or you can import a file using this open uh, open uh, function uh, and then according to every uh, object that you select each object you select will change this property panel and also information panel and uh, also, another important spec, another important part of Purview, with which we have lots of things to do, is this filters menu. And uh, yeah, that's pretty simple to access from the alphabetic order. And also, another shortcut that will work with that, which is control space, which brings you uh, a dialog in which you can type and uh, insert appropriate uh, filters and apply filters to your sources. So let me show, show you quickly how what I mean by this sort of stuff. Like for example, I wanna, uh, like sphere, I insert in a sphere, a sphere here, and uh, you can see, and also navigation in 2D and 3, you can adjust uh, camera here. Uh, there are pretty, lots of options. You will see how we will work with this stuff during real projects. But uh, here I, I've just inserted a source to show you that, yeah, the navigation, the, the behavior of the, of the mouse buttons, they're pretty similar to any other software, you know, the graphical software or uh, computer data design, this sort of stuff. But here, for example, as uh, as we have inserted a sphere here, you see that we uh, we have uh, the con control and the radius and uh, the, the geometrical features of that, but also resolution. What it means when you import something inside Purview is usually a result of another simulations, and you know or you will see that the simulations are usually constructed using a discretized space. And in computational engineering and sciences, this is called a mesh or a grid, computational grid. And here, for example, the resolution for that is indeed uh, the grid here, a discretized sphere, otherwise uh, yeah, the, the continuous space is not something that we work with in in these sort of projects. So the thing is, uh, what I did to change to have this representation is also important. I forgot to say that in the beginning that this is also very important. The way that you represent your entity, uh, the way that you want Parview to render the object for you, I can have different modes. You will see this. The, the variety of different modes uh, in in this series, but the thing is, uh, you can also add 
you can also load plugins and they will also add more uh, view modes into ProView. So this is uh, the render view. You can split uh, your views, your layout into uh, different uh, multiple views and there are lots of different uh, views in ProView. Uh, we will work with a render view apparently and also a spreadsheet view. Uh, these are the most important parts and also line chart view. Uh, these are the most infrequently used uh, views inside uh, this program. Talking about resolution, let me quickly show you how what it means. For example, I change it to 80 and then uh, yeah, it creates a better representation of the continuous sphere in a discretized uh, space. So the way that I zoom is with right click. Uh, now I press that and, and then it allows me to zoom and pan is with the uh, with the middle middle button. And I know an annoying aspect of this user interface when you work with the mouse and you want to navigate or rotate pan and stuff is uh, they are different than 2D and 3D. So if you switch to the 2D space, 2D view, then the, the mouse behavior between the, the, the right and, and the middle button will be a bit different. So, but you will get used to that. So uh, this was indeed uh, a very quick introduction and let me also show you filters like and, and the most important filters are also listed here in the toolbar you can add to add more filters here like uh, clip clip is one of the uh, frequently used ones which you can uh, clip part of the object and in this case uh, is for example cutting the object into two uh, two domains into two two parts and then displaying only one part I will show you practical usage of this in, in the upcoming videos. So that's it. And uh, yeah, uh, let's go to practical videos, uh, to practical projects. It, uh, and just as a last point, let me also point out that the, this animation view, we have, also, we have a lot to do with this. Uh, for for a wide variety of different scenarios and cases and you will see so pretty cool let's go to the real projects